How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have a special guest with us tonight. He can say his name and all the, the cool things he does. What's up, guys? I'm Sean Fitz. I'm an alternative artist from Phoenix, Arizona. I got a new song, a Halo, coming out October 6th. Woo! Maybe I'll want to check it out. <laughs> I'll leave links down below. It will be out by the time this comes out. And, you know, you'll see. Cool. You may you may or may not see a, a link to a reaction video as well. So if you want to go mm. check that, that will also be down below as well. But want to give yeah. a shout-out to Sean um, and also a shout-out to Hail the Sun. They had no idea this was happening, but I just want to give a shout because I love that band. But Sean said he found out about my channel through Hail the Sun. So love that because I love Hail the Sun. So big salute to the guys. But um, you seem to be, from what I got a DM about, it seems like you've been in the scene for a long time. So obviously love to see a veteran of the scene. You know, that's always a good yes. thing to see. Um, you know, how did you kind of start out, Sean? Like, what really motivated you to get into music was there anything specific where you were like you know i know the atypical thing is like i'm in high school i don't know what i'm gonna do let me start right. a band let's do this so was there any like was there anyone kind of like pushing you to be a musician or did it kind of naturally come to you yeah so i didn't i didn't really have a lot of people early on that were uh super like doing music mm -hmm. as like their their thing but uh I have to say, like, when those Guitar Hero games started coming oh. out, that's kind of definitely what drove me into eventually picking up the guitar and getting into that. That's awesome. Probably the, probably the number one thing was Guitar Hero. I played what? so much of that game. Was there any specific songs or, like, bands that stood out to you, you know, when you were going through those games that you were like, man, I want to write something like this? Or, like, was there anything that kind of inspired you to, like, you know move that ball that kind of that kind of started more i mean i always liked classic rock i'm mm. a huge classic rock fan and uh i don't know just like playing those games especially like when i got to like guitar hero 3 i oh. found a lot of like artists on there uh, i know like matchbook romance one of my favorite yeah all right bands of the era i have fall of troy's on that as well yes yeah fc premix yeah yep I Dragon Force, Dragon you know. Force, Kill Switch Engage. Oh, that's true. Kill Switch is on there. Uh, uh, Slipknot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that goes to show how much I love that game. Um, I love that game. It's such a and I had uh, not to plug my own stuff, but I did have Doug of the Sleeping on recently, and that was really sick because he had Don't Hold Back on Guitar Hero Three. So nice. I'm you know. I'm living in my glory days right now, so I'm I'm feeling it. But oh, totally. I mean, and that's like coming coming around so fast now. The nostalgia is hitting everybody right really <laughs> the last handful of years with uh, the Guitar Hero games, especially. Yeah, and then it does look like, from what I could tell as well, that you were you know a guitar player for Sleep Signals for quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. How long after you know again your start was? guitar hero and getting into that what was kind of like the next step into was sleep Nick signals not that much farther after in the timeline or like what's kind so of so i probably happened? i probably started playing those games i don't even remember when i started playing the games <laughs> so i started playing guitar when i was probably like 10 11 years old and uh the first band i joined was when i was 15 and it was just a bar band we did like I, I grew up in the South Chicagoland area. Oh, okay. So that's where this band was located. But we did, like, bars and stuff like that, and the name of that band was Kedzie Avenue. Hmm, so okay. It's a nice Chicago, like, Chicago-themed band. There's a street in Chicago called Kedzie Avenue. Ah, so okay. We named the band after. And then that band ended up disbanding, and we uh, started a new band called Within the Trenches. Okay. released one ep under that name and did one tour that was like my high school band <laughs> <laughs> very sick and that that kind of fell apart and then um i joined a band from houston for a few tours uh called the scars heel and time okay. it was a female fronted uh rock band i think they're still might be active i don't know they haven't done a whole lot in the last handful of years but and then after that i that band toured with Sleep Signals, and then I joined Sleep Signals, and 
relocated to Minneapolis for a handful of oh, years. Oh, wow. Okay. Moving around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very sick. And then uh, what kind of made you... So uh, I imagine during that time period, you had, you know, obviously had gone through that for, uh, you know, four years. What kind of made you want to shift and do more of the stuff, you know, Sean Fitz? I'm curious where, like, that timeline hit where you were like, I need to start putting out my own music. I'd love to start doing like, you know, I've been in a lot of touring acts. Like Mm -hmm. what kind of, what was something that maybe clicked in your head that was like, I need to start releasing my own music. I've probably written X amount of songs over the years. It's time for me to kind of like get that ball rolling. Yeah. That's kind of what it was. Is like, as while I was doing all the tours, playing all this music, I did, I had written albums and, uh, done stuff with like my first band, but especially after taking more of these like, uh, like joining established bands, mm. I had like my own music. Sometimes it didn't fit with the band, so I was like, I need to have a platform that some of these songs just don't get uh, kind of buried in my hard drive. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, definitely, like at the beginning of COVID, I started writing with uh, Ricky Armolino from uh, Ice Nine Kills. Yeah. And uh, he kind of gave me, like, the push that I needed to get into some of this, uh, like, alternative space. So he kind of showed me what was possible, and that's what I've been writing towards since. Yeah, and how how did you go about meeting Ricky? Because, like you said, it it looks like from the DM you sent me, it was back in 2020. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how did you go about meeting Ricky? And then um, was he, like, the first person that you were, like, I have a project. I want to work with Ricky. Like this seems to be the person that, you know, fits what I'm aspiring to do or like in the process of working through. Right. Yeah. So, uh, sleep signals toured with ice nine kills. Oh, okay. In, uh, 29, 2018 at the end of 2018, the same week that the silver scream came out. Oh, wow. So, I experienced a whole the whole tail end of 2018 with Ice Nine Kills playing right after us on a tour with Atreyu and Memphis Mayfire. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, it was just wild. It was <laughs> wild just to see how big that band got seemingly overnight. But they, as you know, have been a band a long time. Oh, yeah. Definitely, like, been grinding it out for years. Spencer's been grinding for years. But, uh... Yeah, so I did that tour with them, and then Ricky was uh, starting to take. Uh, he has does like his production and stuff yeah. like that, and I was just yeah, like, yeah. "This would be a cool, cool mashup." So, so you just hit him up, it. and you're you're just like, "Let's just do hit it." Him up, let's do it, bro. There we go. Well, that's awesome. I friend of the channel uh, Enox has worked with Ricky, so oh, right I, on. Yeah, I, totally. I do know Ricky through that. Ricky, shout outs to you. Um, loved your, I love all of your projects, but this or the apocalypse is a special place in my heart. So I I love that group, which hopefully reunion. I don't know if you'll watch this Ricky, but would love a reunion at some point. I don't know. It's Hawk. It's Hawk. I know it's Hawk, but (laughs) I, I'm a little salty because like, (laughs) I would love to see this or the apocalypse. Not that I don't think Hawk is good. I love Hawk, but there's just something special about the this or the apocalypse stuff that oh i got like, you man. i that you know has a sentimental place in my heart so um mm-hmm. but yeah i that's that's really awesome and like now you know we're on the precipice of you releasing a new song halo um yep. how does that feel to finally because how long of a time frame between you started working with ricky in 2020 so how long of a time frame between that and um obviously working on um stuff with uh getting halo worked on like how long of a time frame was that halo has been uh quite the time frame it was definitely it was my first attempt at making a full a full project um 100 percent just me backing it so (laughs) it took a couple years just to get there um but uh yeah i that Halo started as an idea track that I sent to Ricky at probably like 
late spring of 2020 mm -hmm. and then the song was probably done at the beginning of 2021 wow okay so and you... then since then we filmed the video and we've uh uh got all of that side of it we had it all engineered correctly and like did it all right so it halo is kind of like my best attempt right now <laughs> if that makes sense that's it's a long time I coming. Got. It's it's a it's long, a long time, time, coming. time coming. Yeah. And that's yeah. it's a slow burn, you know. I think like Totally. I, I think a lot of the times when I have groups on, it's it's I always find that it's like especially during that time frame I can only imagine, but like I just find for groups sometimes it's just like when releasing songs, especially when you want to put a lot of like effort, whether it be like mm -hmm. the production you want to make sure the music video looks good. Like all of these processes that take quite a long time and obviously money to put those things together. Um, right. You know, it, I, I think a lot of people were like neglect to think how much time it actually takes for like new groups to come out and how important it is to like for people to check oh, out yeah. the stuff when it comes out. So, you know, how and I think like going to say like trying to make the song is like the easy part yeah <laughs> everything surrounding the song that's that's what gets me with it and how do you feel now that you know we're a couple weeks out from the song releasing i imagine that you must be really pumped that it's finally out after years of oh, yeah, being in the stoked. making so you know have you shown it to like close family and friends yet or are they still kind of in the dark about everything I've uh I've showed it to a handful of people. I definitely okay. have like a small circle that I've kept in the loop as I've gone forward with it. And I like to do that just so that especially for this project, I can mm -hmm. have like a little bit of feedback on it before I have to put it out to everybody and then yeah. just uh take whatever feedback there is, you know. So we've we've grown it a little bit. Actually, I had the whole video filmed um and went back just a few months ago and added a bunch of scenes to it. Like Ooh. we just added a whole other, a whole other B plot to the movie. And like, I just thought it needed it. We needed to take it to the next level. So and that's how, what I'm fortunate. I'm able to do with a project that I have full creative control over. Yeah. Not that any of my previous projects weren't, I didn't have creative control. It's just a hundred percent me. Like I can kind of dictate what happens, you know? It's your baby, yeah. I right. I, I feel exactly. that as someone, this is very much my baby, you know? Like, I, I get it, you know? You have this sense of, like, you have this sense of pride, pride about it, you know? It's like, right. you know you want it to come out great, you know you want, like, you want things like this, like an interview to be well, so, like, it sets up the next iteration of songs or whatever you have working on where people can totally. kind of get excited about it and, I'm I'm pretty stoked to check it out. I'll obviously check it out on release day. Um, but I, I think for me, it's like for going into this and really having like a limited background on what you do, like it's cool to kind of like get this preliminary stuff like mm -hmm. in this interview because then like when I go to actually listen to the song, I'm like, oh, this is what Sean's talking about. This was really cool. I didn't really think about this or like – influence wise like maybe he likes these groups and now i'm like oh now i can hear it now i'm picturing these things so i'm very excited right. to to get, actually give it a listen and really kind of dissect it a little bit more because i feel like right now it's like i i know i have like the basis for what you're doing but now it's gonna be like now i am more pumped to check out the song because i'm like okay this is what he's telling me how much of this stuff is going to like wind up making it into the song or like obviously future releases to go further. So, you know, mm -hmm. are is this kind of like a long play where you're hoping that people like get hooked with this new song and then, you know, obviously I imagine as most musicians do, you have new stuff coming down the pipeline. So, Oh yeah, totally. I didn't, I didn't just spend all I was gonna say I would hope not writing what song Woo! and what video. I would but be... I do got I do have a handful of songs that are all ready to go. So it just this feels like the right time to drop Halo. And yeah. uh the other ones will 
I'm super stoked on all of them just as much as I am on this song. So, is Halo the longest like one that you've taken the time to like really like nitpick and put together, or have there been other songs? Yeah, Halo. Like... Halo has been in the pipeline a long time. Um, there is one more song that I've been working on, just just wrapping up on now. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a song with uh Ryan from uh, Matchbook Romance. And, oh, uh, wow. And I got Shane from Hail the Sun on it as well. So Very sick. That's gonna be that's gonna be a sick track to drop. I don't Ooh. know if it's gonna be coming out this year. You heard it first. Hey. But uh I just gotta keep them interesting, you know? Kudos. It takes time to do it. Oh yeah. Well I think at the end of the day, like it's a, it's worth it, you know. I think like yeah, uh, when you when you look at back on it, like that's how I look back at some of my, the interviews I've done. Like I'm like, oh, holy shit! Like I got to interview this cool person. Like that's amazing, you know. Like it'll be something I'll be able to like remember and obviously watch and just be like, holy shit, that totally. actually happened. That's crazy. Um, so very excited in terms of that, and like obviously, Sean, I have to ask, you know, who influences you? Who's kind of giving you like? the creative direction that you're going in right now like you know who kind of inspires you to write what you're currently writing now and also you know at the current time of halo so as halo is dropping in the last couple months i've switched from spotify back to apple music after being on spotify for years i just like the 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 spatial audio sure yeah i got you but uh so since i did that I have all of my 2015 and before playlists starting to pop up. So I'm getting all the, uh, uh, like, Bring Me the Horizon, Separate Eternal, and like... Ooh, okay, yeah. Uh, Pierce the Veil album. Um, but yeah, Selfish those... Machines. Uh, I can't col- even think of what it's called. Okay. Clyde with the Sky. <laughs> Clyde with the Sky, I was going to say. It's one of those two, I know for a fact. And then like twenty one pilots from that year. Like, okay. Okay. I mean, that's definitely what I've been. I just think that like those three albums in particular don't seem like they've aged oh. quite as much as other albums from that those years. You know, if that makes sense. No, hundred so percent. I'm definitely trying to like focus on pieces of art like that, so that I can do the same with my own music. If that makes sense. Yeah, you want it to be timeless. You know, you want it right. to have that, like, classic, like, like mid-2000s, like, sound. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Right. Without having it just sound like it's from the mid-2000s. Cor- like, correct. Like, the technical yeah. side of it. You want it, to, you want it to have the, like, nostalgia of, like, being from the early 2010s, but you want it to have the modern touches of, like, 2023 and obviously going further. Right, exactly. I feel yeah, that. I think that a lot of a lot of records from that era like really uh, spoke to me. So that's I mean, that's like fair. The most consuming era of mine <laughs> is around that that time period. So same, yeah. I got into the scene pretty much around that time. Maybe like late two thousands was when I kind of like really jumped into it, and then was really kind of head first at the like the 2010s that was really when like some of my favorite records have come out and still go back and listen to and i can say like sepaternal definitely is one of those records that i go back and listen to you know once a month and i'm like holy (laughs) shit it's still good like it's still it still hits like the the nostalgia you think it would and i listen to uh pierce the veil is one of my favorite bands still is um but Selfish Machines is, like, what got me into that band, and I still think that's, like, a 10 out of 10 flawless record. I think that's pretty pretty, pretty close to a flawless record for me, so I, I feel you on that. Um, what kind of made you want to explore more of that, like, sort of nostalgia of, like, that sort of sound? Was that Was that originally what you felt comfortable writing, or I'm just curious, because I feel like a lot of, a lot of, artists now are trying to like look back and be like okay there's this really cool artist that like i grew up listening to i want to try to evoke that sort of feelings that i felt maybe during that time or like sound wise like was there anything that kind of 
initially just joisted you into that direction of being like i i need to write something that resonates the nostalgia but still has the like thing that would be like oh this came out in 2023 that's sick i love that i think that uh what really makes music timeless not necessarily the sounds because the sounds get updated and sure that that changes but i think that the simplicity behind it matters and doing the simplicity in a way that isn't like you're not stealing it from someone else you know sure yeah like trying to trying to write something that's simple but clever at the same time and that's kind of like where a lot of these especially like emo records did it like pretty oh good. yeah because if you break down the songs like for the parts there's a lot of similarities but the simplicity behind it and the nuances are what kind of made it like memorable to you, you know? Oh, so yeah. I just kind of like try to target that. And like, I don't know, even like listen in, in, in between there, like I've definitely like listened to a lot of rap and stuff like that. And like rap tracks musically are very simple. So I kind of like, combine the two try to do the mgk kind of thing yeah with these songs and just kind of blend the two you know yeah not just pop punk i i definitely want to fall more alternative than another pop punk band coming out you know sure you want to kind of find that like gray area between like the nostalgic like emo artist right but also like obviously pulling from the like rap and like trap sort of style of music in that way of like maybe incorporating some more elements of that i do find that totally find that like good niche point and i'd argue you know halo and some of the other songs to come are going to be able to find that like that middle ground between like you like the you like emo rap you like alternative music we're going to try to hit both of those things well yeah and i think you'll see in the next handful of years that more of a genre is going to come from this sort of sound sure like we've def we've definitely heard like the beginning of like the electronic like pop punk like, yeah sort of subgenre category and i think that uh over the next handful of years we'll definitely get to uh kind of see like what that genre ends up being called and where all these artists kind of fall you know yeah that's kind of what i thought emo rap was going to be kind of in that in that lane Mm -hmm. you know i i but i think it's almost i feel like it's almost evolved even more so to be something else that like i'd argue again as you mentioned like something that i'm sure we'll be discussing in like you know a couple years you know i think it's just yeah we'll have a simple name for it a simple name for (laughs) it yeah we typically tend to do that so it, it works out but it's cool that, and, and I think it just shows off, like, a unique level of creativity where, like, obviously I'm older and I love, like, classic emo music, but I also feel like it's nice because it's, like, something different where, like, rap music isn't something that I typically listen to on a daily basis, but I, I like it, you know, I'll listen to it mm-hmm. infrequently, but I'll listen to it, and I've, it would be very curious to f- find something that scratches the itch of like i'm an emo kid and i love this sort of stuff but also is like what's gonna like have some like hype elements to it that i would imagine like rap and like trap and like hip-hop have so it'll be curious to find that niche point between the two and i'd argue your music is trying to find that like that like crossover where both of those things hit you know yeah i think that it's uh a real good like balancing act for people to play right now is trying to like get like figure out what the genre is going to be because i think there's is a lot of demand for it and sure uh, i agree i think that there's a lot of kids coming up now too that have only had like rap influences there's a lot of people that just listen to travis scott you know yeah (laughs) and i think that a lot of people would be open to more like uh in instrumental music and stuff like that and there's a good way to like kind of blend the two genres and i think it'll be good for both genres yeah so right I, now it's kind of like 
it could be kind of considered a negative thing, like the pop punk. Everyone's trying to be MGK, and I yeah. think that we need to <laughs> kind of like get past that and like let people know that there's more in that genre, you know? Yeah, I mean, the two. I will also give him his credit. I am not. I'll preface that I am not an MGK fan by any means, but I'll give him the credit that I feel like he has brought more people to alternative like i think there are a lot totally, more eyes yeah. on our alternative music because of him so i'll give i'll give him that credit but i hope that bands in that sort of niche will carry that torch and like move it a little bit further down down the street or down the road or whatever because i think there is a lot of untapped potential there and yeah i, I think that there it will we'll see in the next you know i mean it'll be curious to see where you know, that crossover of, like, alt and, like, metal and all that sort of stuff where that might meet with, like, rap and hip-hop. Because I've even seen it, like, with Travis Scott, which, like, having mosh pits and stuff. And obviously, right. that's pretty prevalent within metal yeah. music. So it's... I think there is parallels to be drawn, and I, I don't think that's... I, I'd be curious to find an artist that just you know basically is just like hey i'm i'm extending my olive branch we're gonna we're gonna try to find something so i i think it'll be very curious to see how that goes and like you know obviously kudos to you for trying to like again further that sort of thought process and stuff and hopefully meld totally meld those two communities together i think there's definitely a need there you know totally yeah so definitely need to to get it get it going <laughs> <laughs> you got it you got it sean um and then as well as working with ricky how much has he helped you kind of shape your sound and, and what you do i mean like you said you started working with him back in 2020 so i mean i imagine there's been a lot of conversations and song structure and obviously his work within I ice nine you know like i'm sure he's given you a lot of great advice on like how to you know put some of this stuff together so um you know do you have any like critiques on like how he's kind of go gone about your music and like shaped what you've done i think that uh uh so i did two two tracks with ricky nice. that are okay. on here and um i think on the two it was definitely more helping me out with my uh like vocal lines and okay. how how to structure writing your vocals to where because i have a tendency of just writing too much i just yeah. put too much on a song and sometimes you got to like step back and be able to uh just remove all the like you gotta you gotta keep it lean when you're writing it sure that's yeah. like always the way i've been explained it and it uh kind of goes back to uh what i had one of my favorite guitarists is uh john mayer oh because john, john mayer, mayer understands space in his music and doesn't overdo it like john mayer could play anything that you put in front of him but he doesn't because the space is what makes it great. And uh, that's kind of what Ricky helped me out the most with was uh, working on um, like the, the structure of the vocals and where we place everything. But uh, on the technical side, I uh, did all of the mastering and then oh. the other uh, three tracks with uh, my buddy Nick Nativo in Illinois. Um, he does like uh oceano and bands like that so he Ooh. he is uh okay more in a heavy genre yeah. but i had him do my first uh record i did with my first band my first band was a metalcore band oh so sick. i did okay. a record with him in 2017 and then took this project back to him so it was definitely uh a many day process of oh yeah tweaking and working with it but um he was kind of like my right hand when it comes to like writing the music and like if i got to work out ideas in the booth like that's where i did it at and spent a lot of time out there in south suburbs of chicago there you go shout out to nick and you yeah, know nick obviously putting those songs together i'm excited to i think it just uh, obviously the more we talk i think it makes me more excited to see like i've gone through a ton of different genres and i'm it's curious to just kind of pick your brain on like what sort of things that you grew up listening to as well as like what influences you now and just finding that that journey of all of these artists that kind of influence your sound and 
where you're going about it and stuff. So everybody can check out Halo down below if you haven't already. Hell go, yeah. Go give a follow to Sean, too. That's how you'll keep up with all the stuff. But um, next question I have for you, Sean, is a fun one. If you could pick a song to cover, what would it be? Mm, damn, that's a good one. Uh, I think to cover, huh? Yeah. Man, putting me on the spot. <laughs> I tend to do that. Uh, so I had to think. I don't know, because I usually have like a lot of songs that I think would like make a good cover. Okay. And then doesn't it doesn't oh, shape out that way <laughs> well i that's like one of the things i've been thinking of is like i just want to like sit down one day and just write a bunch of covers like a lot of things i hear on the radio like especially especially like 80s like pop songs and yeah stuff like that, and just bringing them into the the new uh the new space you know okay yeah all right but um yeah, I don't know. If I if I think of something, I'll say it. <laughs> You'll have to let me know. If not, I'll I'll throw some text up on the screen. And I'll, I know a lot of times it's like answer paralysis a little bit, you know. So if you have a oh, good one, I know that's totally what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me know in the DMs, and I'll throw your I'll throw your answer up on the screen. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think I would have to give Halo a listen first, and I probably could give you a better idea of what it, I feel like you would be, what would be good, a good cover. Um, it would have to be something '80s for sure. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I think yeah, I don't know. An '80s song to redo now would be pretty cool. I'll have to figure it out. But if you have any good '80s songs, guys, let us know down in the comment section below. I can't guarantee you Sean will do it because I can't force anybody to do anything. But, you know, a healthy <laughs> suggestion is always nice. So drop it down in the comments. Let us know. I love suggestions. <laughs> I love a good suggestion, too. So drop them down below. We'll make sure to thumbs up the faves. But next question for you, Sean, another fun one. What is your favorite food to eat? What's your go-to? My go-to uh, since moving to Arizona has definitely been tacos. Oh, I go for a- I go for tacos pretty frequently. You got a you got a go to taco that you like? Mm, probably. I mean, I keep it simple with the carne asada, but a, lo- a nice longaniza taco, Ooh, like chorizo. Okay, love that. All right, flexing. I like it. Or a birria taco. Those Ooh. are those are a new discovery too. The dipping the dipping tacos. I got those. you. Yeah, yeah. The consomme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've watched. You know, I'm a I'm a Food Network guy, so I know. Nice. I know. I I watch a lot of that stuff. I, so, love that good dipping taco. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm going to be thinking about for the rest of this interview is birria taco. So, thank yep. you for that, Sean. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, the the next question I have for you is, if you could pick somebody to collaborate with on an up and coming Sean Fitz song, who would you love to collaborate with? I'll give you. You can give me two answers for this. One. The first answer is the more reasonable one. Like if you wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, into the camera and let people right. know who you want to, <laughs> you know, if you want to work with that, you know, you know, maybe if you want to shout out a homie. Uh, and then the second one is one that you would like is a dream. Like we're manifesting it. We're putting it out there. All right. So the dream would be John Mayer. Oh, I, bro. I think that would be. It's either got to be John Mayer or Lil Wayne. Oh, Lil Wayne. Okay. I was not expecting. Yeah. Those are two <laughs> different worlds. I respect that, though. Yeah, I think that there could be a cool mashup. Okay. Okay. Or something like that. Okay. And okay. then a more reasonable one. Mm, let's see. Man, I don't know. I feel like I I got my reasonable ones coming up. Uh, probably, I think a cool collab would be, uh, Spencer from Periphery. Oh, but on like a, a soft song. Yeah. 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 Okay. There's no time signature changes in this. Yeah. Song. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he did do that one first to last album. So, I mean, you know, yeah, dudes, dudes got, dude can do pretty much anything. So I'm not really surprised, but great answers. The Lil Wayne one surprised me. I I feel like I, I shouldn't Lil be Wayne surprised. Would be, a, would be a fire feature. 
<laughs> I, I think so, yeah. So, guys, listen, this is what I need you to do. I need you to tag Sean, of course, because I already know you're following him. So go do that if you haven't. That's step one. Step two is you go tag Sean, and then I'd also need you to tag Spencer Stilatello from Periphery, Lil Wayne, and John Mayer, and then you type in the word <laughs> collab. And listen, I've been on the internet for a long time, you know, and you know, you know the saying, if it's on the internet, it's probably real. So I'm just saying, if you want to, you know, that help would, the algorithm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the ball in your court. That would be quite the collab. It would be quite them. the collab. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Little Wayne would be like, what the fuck's going on here? I don't know. What, it, what am I getting into? You know? Lil Wayne, I just want him as a guitar feature. Do you oh, see that? God. New, oh, no. Do you no, see that new yes, video? I have... He's back playing guitar. Oh, no. I saw the first one. Ago. I saw the first one. Oh, there's dude. a new clip? Yeah, from uh, just the other week. Oh, he's I got it. Yeah, he's on a new song playing guitar. I'm going to have to. And he I'm plays gonna... uh, Eddie Van Halen guitar on it. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm going to wa- <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch that. Guys, oh, yeah. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go check that out. <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, no. He got memed yeah, the last bad. time. He's going to get memed again. That's why it's so funny. He's I back. Think he's back. The he might be the best guitar player to ever live. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, like Lil Wayne, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, of course. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toast and a bossy is below, you know. Yeah. Lil Wayne. Oh my god. Lil Wayne. Toastin. <laughs> I can't. This is great. Guys, I'll leave a link. <laughs> Just as I said. Watch this first in first, in, and then you know go watch the little wing clip after. But yeah, oh god, I can't believe that. I'm just gonna move on from that question because I can't. I can't even <laughs> believe that's a reality. But you did bring up a really good thing at the beginning of the interview, Sean. I'm a huge video game fan, so I love asking this question. If you could be a video game character, who would you be? Hmm. Damn, that's a hard one. I don't. I have to say, I'm not. I like video games. I play a lot of video games, but I play a lot of Call of Duty. Okay, that's and fair. And I've always played a lot of Call of Duty. You'd be Nicki and Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I but thought I that was the I... wildest thing. I saw that like show up on my like Instagram feed, and I was like, God, "Is that always Nicki Minaj?" Some, like, crazy shit in there. You'd be Snoop Dogg in it too. Oh, that's wild. I don't know if I'd do that. Yeah, you just run around the corner and Nicki Minaj is right there blasting you. <laughs> yeah, now with raps, with a, you know, a weapon. With a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Anyway, I, I derailed your answer, that, so. <laughs> other than that game, all I played was really Guitar Hero. So, but I guess if I had to pick somebody I gotta be, I'll be Luigi. How did you, I, I gotta ask how you've come to that conclusion that... That's the only other game I can think. I I play a uh, Nintendo Switch. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. So, uh, but I play the Mario games, and that's the only game that really have like characters in them. So I got to pick Luigi. That's fair. Well, I feel like I have to do this. I gotta give a slight plug. So, it's a little homage to the Guitar Hero games. Oh, nice. So it's in the not the font. Not the font quote unquote <laughs> not the font not, not the font not the font so anyway you can pick that up if you want do it up um but the next question i have for you sean is if you were to compile a dream tour lineup including yourself who'd be on this tour mm, dang i'd have to say uh lil wayne <laughs> keeping the theme strong i appreciate that you know lil wayne knock loose and then i'll i'll open i'll open <laughs> yeah. i just don't, think that don't, be a, don't let him pull your fingers to be you know to be <laughs> an opener right you know nah i want to i want to open that one <laughs> that's <laughs> what a what a show i mean i guess it's not that crazy i i don't think that is out out of this world crazy because knock loose plays Lollapalooza. so i feel like you know right anything's on the table now at this point what I'm saying is, like, now that, uh, who was that band that played at Lollapalooza that was telling people to, like, jump the barricade and get on stage? Did you see that? 
Was it Lollapalooza? Um, are you sure it wasn't or... Riot Fest? Was it? Oh yeah, that's in Chicago. Too. It was. Um, it was. Um, Drain. That's who it was. Yeah. 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 They're sick. So, I love Drain. He's like collaborative festivals are getting all these oh, like mixed genres like great i'm telling you man that 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 genre i'm talking about is gonna come out of this you know i also think like hardcore right now is like doing so well like as a oh, genre yeah. like they they're crushing it so if you haven't checked out knock loose drain speed a really big like australian hardcore band they're doing great stuff i mean tons of great bands scowl also played Actually, so yeah, they played. It wasn't Lollapalooza. Uh, not Clues played Co- not not Clues played Coachella, Coachella. and yeah. also Scout played Coachella the same time, which is another great hardcore band. And then Drain played Riot Fest. So, I retract my statement on the Lollapalooza thing. Now, if a hardcore band did play Lollapalooza next year, I have already called. I it, wouldn't. So. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling it now. I'm going to call it now. That's my... That's it's my... either we're going to get more bands like that on these festivals or we're not going to see any more lineups like this. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to, they don't want to hire the ex security to keep everybody in line, you know? Oh, yeah. That, that one show, it looked like it was wild. And that was their last song, too. Yeah. Oh, so my God. Like they're, they're, they're like... They, <laughs> Luckily, they were cool. They gave a shout out to the stage manager, but I, uh, I would be f- like, if I was the stage manager, I would be like, so I'd, I'd be, be like, sweating. I'd be sweating. <laughs> yeah, I, I would for sure be sweating. I mean, obviously, it'd be sick. Not gonna lie, but you also have like people's safety, all of the gear. Like, oh, oh yeah, man, totally. Shout out to that lady. Big salutes to her. But mm-hmm. uh, next question for you, Sean. Obviously, great segue. Um, in your opinion, who puts on a great live performance in terms of the bands you've seen? Uh, best live performance I've seen. I've seen uh, Rammstein twice. How was that? That was they those those shows seem pretty wild. Yeah, pretty wild. The fi- the amount of fire and stuff like that, crazy. They're probably like the best production show. I've I've seen uh, Slipknot. Slipknot Ooh. does a good a good job with their their live show. Those are like two that come straight to mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, did you see them? You didn't see them with Joey, did you? Joey Jordanson? No. Okay. I I think the first time I saw Slipknot, when was that festival? Was it whatever year, the first Chicago open air. They don't do that. They haven't done that festival in years. 2016? Oh, okay. I was, okay. So, so you're, yeah. You're seasoned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to look. I I'll, I I trust your word. Yeah. You know. I just looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I would have believed you anyway if that was the case. Um but that's really sick. Yeah. I I think I've seen Slipknot like once maybe. I'm trying to remember. It's been a while, but yeah, I I think I've at least seen them one time. But I haven't seen Ramstein, but I'd love to see Ramstein. I uh yeah, I would definitely recommend it. They only I, they've only played a, a handful of times in the United States in the last, like, 20 years. I know they were banned for a long time because of their show, but I, they come back every once in a while now. <laughs> I'll have to just go over to Europe where they're from, so I know they play a lot more in the, like, big European festivals, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. let me know, Ramstein. Love to have you on the show. Um <laughs> Next question for you, Sean, is favorite TV show, favorite movie? Um, I definitely watch a lot more TV than I do movies, but okay. Uh, on movies, I probably have to say Pulp Fiction. Ooh, classic, yeah. Probably the number one on there, and then uh, TV shows, probably King of the Hill. Oh, <laughs> another classic! I love that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's a toss-up between King of the Hill or Seinfeld. I've definitely gone through uh, periods where, like, that's all I watch are King of the Hill or Seinfeld on repeat. You just throw it on. It's like the white noise. Throw it know? on. I got yep. you, yeah. People mm-hmm. normally say The Office, so I appreciate the switch up, you know? King of the yeah. Hill, underrated show, you know? I feel underrated, like, yeah. I feel like people <laughs> talk about it, but, like, 
it's like I feel you know, like people you know. don't really yeah if you know you know i feel like most people don't even don't give it a chance they're i just, just love like, how they talk it's just like that oh, it's, I, it's just like man. bobby you know i can't do it very well <laughs> <laughs> that was my best impression don't don't kill me in the comments <laughs> all right i'll work on it um but yeah no i love that pulp fiction another classic movie classic cinema so very good picks Next question for you, Sean. If you're trapped on a desert island for the next month, there was one album you could bring with you to listen to. What album would it be? If it's in the next month, then I'm bringing Sepaternal. Oh, ho, ho. all right, <laughs> all right. I like that. Uh, if it's, if I'm gonna be there for a couple years, I probably am gonna bring Continuum by John Mayer. Is that is that your favorite John Mayer record? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I teeter. Like I'm like I love Continuum, such a great record. But I don't know. I'm like an OG. I love Room for Squares. I feel like that one. Yeah, Room for Squares is like the a close second for sure. It's so tough. Like Continuum every... is what got me on Mare for sure. That's fair. That's fair. I find that like every time I listen to Room for Squares, I'm just like I just think of Neon, and I'm just like that riff. Oh yeah, gets stuck in my head. It's hard. Uh, that riff's super tough, but I love that song so much and that whole album. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's normally a toss up. It's however I'm feeling. Like I'm feeling a little bit more like bluesy, then I go to Continuum. If I'm feeling a little bit mm -hmm. more happier, then I'll you know go for Room for Squares. But yeah, both both fantastic records. I still have to give like his like bluegrassy like folksy stuff a chance. I feel like I often overlook those records, but. I know people's. I, I know people really love those records, so I'll have to. Oh, give them totally. Listen. Yeah, I feel like I totally like undervalue <laughs> Mayer's other records and just listen to those too. <laughs> Though I will say, beyond that, like blip of like the folk blue stuff, like the search for every. I think it's the search for everything. Anything like his newer, like the newer records he's done, um, I've really enjoyed. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's totally. kind of like that period where he's doing like battle studies and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, like, you know, but I'll, I'll go back and listen. The, I'll go back years. and listen to him. <laughs> I'll let you guys know what I think about it. But I, I, I think John Mayer is uh, just a insane musician. One artist I haven't seen live. I'd love to see. I think yeah. That, I've never seen him live either. That would be, that would be one for sure. Add that to the list. Maybe. Maybe Sean and I will go see John Mayer next. That's let us know <laughs> in the comments. Um, but the last question I have for you, Sean, is my personal favorite. I always end this off with all my interviews. Um, thank you for spending time. Really appreciate it, guys. Go check out Halo. You know, Sean will tell you after this where he can find Jad and all that stuff. But um, what makes music important to you? Why are you passionate about it? Because, like, we talked about Halo took – three years to be put together and it's finally going to be coming out and you have you know the common trope that every band jumps into big things coming soon you know oh, it's yeah. a joke everybody everybody knows yeah, imagine <laughs> imagine cool things coming soon cool, cool things come yeah <laughs> <laughs> he just wakes up sean wakes up every morning looks in the mirror and says big things coming soon just keep just and he's just it's hard to tell yourself eggs. that on the, on the calendar he keeps marking the eggs right? on every day <laughs> And then he has like on the in October he just has a big circle around it and it says big things coming soon. No. Um right. but no, I, I genuinely, you know, I, I think because you know, we often forget that artistry takes time and you know, putting all that stuff together does take, you know, a team and effort, you know, finding, you know, the reasons to why you want to do it. Um, you know, what makes you passionate about releasing your own music? as a solo entity like you know what kind of invigorates you to keep going keep doing it and obviously hopefully a very fruitful career going further for you yeah i just uh i don't know it's this music has always just kind of been my thing and uh i've definitely enjoy it a lot i've enjoyed like learning different instruments over the years and writing songs that i think are interesting and um i think what's finally coming to uh, fruition is the uh the fact that over the last handful of years i've been able to build like a small team of people independently 
um, to where I can take the visions I have and uh, put them in a format that people can consume. Mm-hmm. So um, it's my only thing. I'm all in on it. You know, I uh, outside of music, I work six days a week at a restaurant Ooh. and uh, have been a road dog for years, like playing instruments for a handful of bands and um yeah just hope that i can keep doing it forever you know it's your time in the sun the dream i feel that yeah well i hope it does well and you know obviously well you're welcome back anytime you want so um i appreciate you having me on uh especially not knowing much of anything about me you're one of the first people to interview me um, oh very sick for in this in this sort of context you know like it's definitely different being one-on-one with people and not having a a whole band with me to answer questions you know i'm not answering one or two questions for an interview (laughs) you're answering all of them you know right Um, and i you know i think for me it's like i i appreciate the i appreciate the level of effort like you know like i think oftentimes we look at it from the perspective of like when I get DMs, you know, because I do get DMs, I get emails all the time about new groups and stuff, and, like, I try to do my best to get all of them on because I know how difficult it is to be a new artist in a scene that is just... You you get 20 new artists recommended to you every day, probably more, you know, and and to kind of siphon the way through and try to figure out, like, up-and-coming artists people who have new stuff out like it's such a it's such a daunting task and like want to try to make that easier for people to like if they do check out halo which again highly recommend you go check it out um like i think i, I hope this gives people a little bit more context into the song like into you know what you're doing and even maybe in a very like hindsight way where people can take a look at this and be like, whoa, I can't believe Sean did this interview with like this guy that didn't know really anything about him. And now like seeing like everything that come out or, you know, things to be coming out in the future, like I'll be keeping my eyes out and seeing, you know, what you have coming out and what you have releasing, and, you know, try to do, try to do more homework as, as the songs come out and, and, you know, really delve into them. Cause I think it's, it's a difficult thing as a new artist and I try to do my best to make sure that, you know, people are checking out the new stuff. Like there's always going to be a new artist to give a listen to. So I hope people give you the time of day to give you a listen, you know? I appreciate it, man. Yeah. It's awesome that we can collab on stuff like this and we don't need anybody else in between. (laughs) Like do taking care of it, you know, it's been that way for, eight years and it'll probably be that way for as long as i want to keep it that way so but appreciate your time sean this is the this is the tumultuous moment of telling the people where they can find you at online what you have coming up in the up and coming future and you can talk a little bit more about halo and like you know what you want people to take away from the song and stuff cool yeah guys uh halo's dropping october 6th by the time you're already seeing this it's probably it's probably already out. You can check the links below. And I appreciate you guys listening to me for an hour on this. So <laughs> there we and go. And I appreciate Brandon for having me on. Oh, of course, Sean. Welcome back anytime. Please go check out Sean Fitz. All of the links will be down in the description. Go check out Halo. There'll also be a reaction video. Please go give that a watch. Uh I probably spend a lot of time doing this, so this is my this is the thing that I enjoy the most. So hopefully if you enjoy watching the reaction video, you enjoy listening to this song, please go give Sean some love down in the description. And uh, as well as that, if you enjoyed the interview, share, like, and subscribe. It goes a long way. I'm really my stretch goal is to hit five K before the year's over with, but I think we're probably gonna we're probably gonna hit three K, which I'm actually really stoked about. So if you could hit that subscribe, that'd be amazing. And a huge thanks to Sean for coming on and chatting with me. Thanks, Brandon.